<laughs> Alright, so today was a good day. We did a, a bunch of testing on the Wrangler. Um, do you guys want to talk about you know, experiences that we had and uh, what we think you know, about the suspension currently with the Bilstein 8100s? Um, you know, everybody drove it. Yeah, first so. off, yeah, first off it was like, it was actually pretty hard to unsettle it. Like, especially at speed. I was like, oh, this will make it bounce all over the place and like at baseline it wouldn't. In fact, when we were up above Bishop and like going to that, that section, I was like, oh, this isn't that bad at all. Compared to like that thing, it was like, that thing was like bucking at like every every turn and then you take, take the Wrangler and it was just like, you, you feel everything, but like the body is just so, so planted, which is super nice. Yeah, I felt like we tried to put it in situations where it was going to uh, give us dramatic results and it just kept handling it. Like it, it just kept on performing. Yeah, the only time we were able to do it is is full soft on everything, and then that, and that was like, it felt like it felt like the Kings, because <laughs> it was just like it was like it was very much like this feeling all over the place, and you're like, oh, I can. Yeah. So that was interesting. Um, how did you guys, uh, you know, in in your opinion? being able to change the settings, is that something that's easier to do? Is it, you know, in comparison to other brands, do you get, um, do you feel like it's easier to do than other brands along the same lines or, you know, a little bit harder? It's it's nice um, having the infinite adjustment within that range. You're not having to stick to certain clicks. Um, I mean, I know most people probably aren't gonna notice that or think that that's a big thing, but um, it just it just feels like you're, you're able to get every little inch out of it, um, out of the adjustments. So you're saying because there's no clicks, you're not limited to very specific adjustments. You kind of can do whatever you want with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, the range of adjustments is huge. We went, like we went from the, the super soft setting, um, or soft setting all around, and then we, um, we found something in the middle. And that adjustment is super noticeable. There's a lot of um, a lot of shocks where you don't get that much of a noticeable difference. Yeah, I think with the click with the clickers, I, I definitely don't quote me on the actual numbers, but like on like Fox King and Icon, there's a certain like on a when you're looking at a dyno graph, making the adjustments to compression or making the, the clicker adjustment only alters it between like 100 and 150 pounds per inch or something like that. I forgot how they do the measurement, but the clicker, when, when like the ten, when it's 10 clicks on on a dial of like, that's one full 360 rotation of the whole clicker contains 10 clicks. Yeah. Uh, on these, you're doing 10 full turns to move that screw. That screw probably moves what, like an inch? like an inch and a half maybe half, into yeah. the actual body. So yeah, I imagine that makes makes a much bigger difference than just the clicker adjustment. Um, but that's, uh, you know, I don't have any actual science behind that, but easier. Well, the fact that rebound adjustment exists when so many others don't have rebound adjustment. So it's really hard. You're only really comparing it to the BP-51s. And those are, we originally, we would be originally like bitched about how hard they were yeah. <laughs> to adjust. And now I'm like, oh, I kind of miss them because these, they're not easy. Um, it takes a lot. But yeah, you got to have that tool. tools in there. We yeah. have to buy so, a tool for it. So yeah. definitely having the um, socket Allen head makes it a lot easier because the, the bypass tubes are pretty easy to add, um, access. You just got to have a couple more tools with you to, to make those adjustments. Yeah, I think um, so too. And not, not everyone's going to be out there like, oh, that didn't feel good. Let's go the complete opposite yeah. <laughs> yeah. and take all that time. Usually you're fine tuning and fine and, and adjusting. So yeah, not everyone's going to take like, we were taking like 10 or 15 minutes to like make that four corner adjustment when we were tuning. But yeah, once it got going, it was pretty quick. Yeah, I was, I was able to drive the Jeep like, like I do with a, a solid axle or a IFS truck through through some of these washboard roads. Yeah. Um, and it, that's that's a huge testament to, to the shock setup. Um, usually with the solid axle truck, you're kind of taking it a little bit slower just because 
Um, you have that solid axle. Um, it's moving a lot more. Yeah, yeah. It's moving almost twice as twice. The wheels are moving, is that right? Moving twice, almost twice as much as like a IFS? Uh, so the, the, the shock to, to wheel ratio is one to one on a, on a solid axle. Um, whereas the tire, um, the travel, or I guess the tire movement to shock movement on an IFS truck is, is closer to two to one. So the IFS trucks, the, the shocks are, um, are, are working a little bit harder than they would be on the solid axle. Um, but the biggest difference is the IFS truck, um, because it's independent front suspension, it's able to go through some of that choppier stuff a little bit smoother and flatter. But when you have your solid axle truck um, tuned right to, to go through the choppy and the rough stuff, I mean, you can drive that thing just as easy as you could with, uh, with an IFS um, truck that's designed, to, that, that's designed to be a little bit more comfortable in the rough stuff. I mean, I feel like like overall the suspension is really confidence inspiring now. Um, you know, the setup that we had previously to these shocks, um, I just I didn't like it. It was too soft, and I felt like I didn't have control. And I feel like with these, um, I was driving faster today. I felt like I had more control off road in a, in all the different situations, from the sandy, silty type stuff that we went through to uh, you know the washboard stuff. Like everything just felt more controlled and. You pointed it and it went where you wanted it to go. Yeah, and even if you hit something random that like threw you off, you just be like, eh, you landed and you're, you're like going again. It's not like a, it's not like a, you hit it and then now you're, re now. Yeah, it felt really responsive. Yeah. Yeah, and most of what we did today is probably is a pretty good indicator of what what you typically see on like trails unless you're really hunting for like high speed whoops and, and yeah. whatnot like not not a lot of jeeps are not a lot of wranglers are doing that um i think we i think we saw a pretty good amount of like what you would typically typically see on a normal trail day right probably there wasn't a lot of like unpredictable rocky stuff like you, like you, that you kind of see down there in like big bear or yeah. like johnson valley or whatnot or like the road is like nice and dirt, but then all of a sudden there'd be like a really fucked up rocky section where you have to like slow down or just you know send it and hope your suspension handles it. But out here it's super predictable. It's like oh here's a fucking long ass washboard section or here's a uh, you know the, the up and down undulations and from that um, not by the silt beds but like over there by the lake. I also feel like we didn't spend a lot of time tuning. Like we just kind of went with some, you know, uh, let's do this many stops mm -hmm. and just went with it. Um, we didn't really spend a lot of time tuning it and it still performed really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't get to drive it when it was fully soft like you guys did. Um, but, you know, for out of the box, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then the changes that we did make were noticeable. Mm -hmm. Like it was noticeably, you know, extra firm last yeah. night. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was it was really firm. And then... You know, today I felt like we put it into a, a pretty good spot. Yeah, the, the, and the firm. You know, if I was out here and doing what we kind of did today, I would probably leave it on the firmer side of things, just because like a lot of when you're out here, you're like uh, depends. You're not really going for comfort. I'm not really sometimes not really going for comfort a lot. Usually you're trying to like go go for speed and make sure you have your vehicle under under control. Uh, and like the high, the firm stuff just feels like it was super planned no matter what you were doing. You felt everything. Um, so if you're like a comfort queen, then that's not the best setup. But like, as far as going fast goes, it felt, felt great. I mean, if you're a comfort queen, you're probably not buying a Jeep. <laughs> 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 you're gonna get a Cadillac. <laughs> yeah, the nice, like we have them um, set up a little bit firmer than what they came from, uh, how, how they came out of the box, but there's just, so much more room for for adjustment on on the firm end of things where if you decided that you wanted to go out and and hit some whoops um do you have that adjustment there to to be able to handle that what was causing the through that 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 section we, we did a lot of tuning on where it would we would go over the bump and it would come down and then rebound up pretty pretty dramatically is there a way we can like 
make it so it catches down and doesn't rebound so hard. Is it is is that slowing down the the rebound response, or is that? Yeah. So so you'd be firming up the uh, or firming the, up the pressure, yeah, adding more rebound um, rebound depth okay. to, to that, so that um, it it's not so springy. Okay. Um, yeah. When you're when you're going through the bumps. Yeah, that's the thing. I was I was kind of wanting to wanted to change up a little bit. Is that is that springy through the bigger bumps? How was it like? Because we didn't, we didn't, get, I didn't, we didn't, after that tuning session, we kind of just hightailed it all the way to the highway, and there was a lot of, like, a lot, some, some crazy stuff. In the, in the, in the I mean, we tried, we tried to jump it, <laughs> and we, yeah, it, you know, it just kind of floated. Yeah. It, how did it feel when you, how, how did it feel when it landed? Was it, like, that nice, catchy feeling, or was it kind of harsh? I mean, interestingly enough, I, I feel like we weren't able to really bottom it out. Yeah. Um, it felt, I mean, it's, it still was rough, but I, I think that's more due to the, how much stuff we have in the back. Yeah. Um, we've got all our equipment. Yeah. You know, if you weren't top, food. yeah, if it wasn't topping out or bottoming out, then like, that's a, a Yeah. Good. I felt like it was reasonable. Yeah. And, the, and I mean, in the passenger seat, it felt, it felt nice. Um, I would say plush, uh, maybe we could go a little bit firmer on the compression, uh, on the compression damping for those big, for the bigger G outs. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, he's holding a camera and getting usable yeah. footage yeah which you know typically it's kind lot. of stuff you're moving yeah. around like this you can't get anything yeah and he's able to get usable footage of us you know and we're also like talking about like the top one percent of like shock dynamics too like there's not not many people have 8100s yeah no one can like you can't really this is like race race car kind of tuning that we're that we're trying to do on a freaking street wrangler yeah <laughs> i mean it's a blast i love it it's fun <laughs> I mean, I, of the shocks that we've tried so far, obviously these are leaps ahead of everything else that we've that we've tested. Great, um, we're gonna take them off next week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> gonna go back to the uh, stock ones, right? <laughs> Throw on some Rancher Five Thousand. Just not the Kings, please. <laughs> I, I am looking forward to, to taking him out to the desert to, to hit some of the bigger ones. Um, and empty out that back. Feels. Yeah. Yeah. Empty it out. How it feels without a bunch of stuff rattling in the back. It throws you off a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah. You're just like, oh, that was that, that as big as that seemed like? Yeah, I, I think we could have gone uh, quite a bit faster through some of those sections, but I know um, I, did, I did let off a little bit just because <laughs> hearing, hearing the yeah. stuff in the, in the back just kind of yeah. made, made me not want to push it as hard. That, that's what I was saying. I was like, how much stuff do you have in the back? That's why I always ask him. Because every, like, every time I go hard, I'm just like, I hear just like, I'm like I hope I didn't. <laughs> yeah, we've got, I mean, in the back right now, we've got the cooler, we've got all the, all of the drinks in the cooler, uh -huh. uh, we've got food, we have camera equipment, like yeah. all kinds of camera equipment in there, yeah. um, lighting, we uh, have... How about like 300 pounds, maybe, do you think? How much... I would think that there? would be reasonable. Two, 300 pounds, probably. I mean, even the, the case on the top would be, you know, 60 pounds before we ripped it off. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was a testament to how violent, you know, that section was that we were testing on. If it was able to rip that case off, that I mean, those zip ties were rated for 180 pounds each. Yeah. The other the other thing I would, I'd like I want to want to do is like, you know, do a full you know a full load out for a week trip. You know, you have all your food for a week, your water for a week out in the desert. Um, you got your top rack loaded up. You probably, you probably have another 500 pounds, not in addition, but like an 500 pounds beyond. Um, passenger and, and, and whatnot that that'll that'll make a lot of difference in like the way that the rear end handles on bumps and on body roll so that's a that's an entirely kind of different and that's like you know slow going like utah trails you're not blasting down that stuff yeah usually you're but that's a lot of rockiness and so you're really trying to like maximize shock travel on the body roll but it also that it, so it's not like not it's not like a it's not like a whip you know, I mean, it, it, for us, we don't even feel like we're going fast. And yeah. the person at the state park today was mentioning that we were going a little too quick coming in. Well, down that hill, too, I was like, everyone can see us doing this. <laughs> I didn't think we were going that fast. I just felt like normal normal cruising. Yeah, 30, mile, 30 miles an hour isn't fast, but when he kicks up all that dust, it's yeah. like, oh. And I do want to point out, he does have a bunch of weight in the back, and, and we were mm -hmm. able to get that, that, oh, that shock valve um, dialed in pretty good. Yeah, he mentioned that uh, he felt like the back was was pretty solid, 
um, but that we we should probably adjust the front a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, um, and then obviously when we if we go out to the desert and we have everything loaded up for just a day trip where there's nothing in the back, that that valve the, those those rebound and compression settings are going to change. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, going, going faster. Yeah, I do feel like most most of the time I do have that thing pretty loaded though. Like I'm if I'm driving that it's because I'm probably going to go work, so I have all my gear. So if you if you're going faster. And you're seeing a lot more. You're seeing those whoops at, at, and the bumps and the undulations at you quicker. You're gonna slow. You're gonna, you're gonna let off the rebound. You're gonna slow it down, basically. Um, slow down that wheel response. It, it depends. Or keep it. Keep it ball out super fast. I would. You know, I, I because I haven't driven the Jeep too much. Um, I'm not too sure where I would where, where I would go. Mm -hmm. um, just because a lot of the things that I do is kind of by by feel and actually being inside this in the yeah. seat um, and getting that kind of feel for it first. Uh, but like I mean, through the through the small whoops that we were going through, um, it felt felt good. Uh, it was staying on top of the it was staying on top of the the big washboards, big washboards, small whoops is yeah. kind of what they they felt like or what they seemed like. Um, but it was staying on top of it. And uh, once you got on top of that, it was, it was smooth. They felt better the faster we went. Yeah, and I mean that's that's typically how you should be driving over stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, with with vehicles that don't have adequate suspension, they're just not able to do it. Which is what was nice about this is it Cause you felt confident enough to go at those speeds over that stuff. It'll probably just. I mean, after, there were some sections in there with like a, a lot of just washboard that kind of didn't end for like minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can't you can't do that fast on like a normal just two inch gas shock. I mean, you probably could, but like they'll heat up. Super it's gonna quick. heat up, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it'll get get very very loose towards the end. Yeah. Cavitation city. <laughs> <laughs> we need a temperature gun. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, anything else on the Bilson 8100s? Like anything else that you guys noticed or? Um, I mean, when it comes to, to the, uh, the adjusters, I would say um, before you stick that Allen, uh, Allen key in there, make sure they're clean. Um, that way you don't strip out any of the, uh, the, the adjusters. But other than that, build quality on them is solid. Um, mm -hmm. build, build sign quality is, is kind of what it comes down to. Get, get what you pay for. Yeah. Um, very easy to put put on. Very pretty pretty easy to put on. Um, and they're they're great instructions to help out with that. Um, and for for the average driver who's who's out maybe once a month, it's probably not the not the setup for them. But if they're constantly out, they they like driving. They they want to maximize their suspension when they are out, um, or like you, you're you know you you carry a lot of uh, camera equipment and, and going through these rough the the rough terrain is is it's important to have smooth right suspension for people like that. I mean, these 8100s are, are well worth it. I love them. I'm yeah. sold. <laughs> yeah, you can just like the just the massive range of what you could make the actual driving experience. That's like, that's, that's, it's very much like a, not, I want to say set it for and get it, but like, if you're going to like, if you're, if you're buying a vehicle and you're like, I'm going to have this, this vehicle for 10 years or 15 years, and you're looking at a suspension upgrade, just like go with something like that. That's just going to last you the entire time and you do whatever you want with it and then you rebuild it. Yeah. You, you can re rebuild these after something miles too. Yeah, so that's nice. nice. Yeah, that's what that's what happened because that's what's happening now is like a lot of people are you know so many people are on to their second off-road vehicle or whatever they've been doing it for a while and they're like okay now i know what i want and you see so many people building their their thing like right out the gate you know and so that it's definitely appropriate for something like that um it might if you, if you aren't unsure if, if you're not if i wasn't sure if i was keeping the vehicle i probably wouldn't throw a four thousand dollar suspension on it um 
that they are pretty expensive, but like in terms of you're gonna spend three G's on Kings or you're gonna do four G's on some Bill Stein rebound and compression and adjustable stuff, I would go Bill Stein for sure. Yeah. You're you're future proofing yourself. Yeah, exactly. Whatever whatever loadout you want, whatever speeds you want, whatever environment you want, like you set it at the beginning of a, a week in Utah or a week in the desert and like pretty good to go. In my opinion, uh, the Wrangler is way more fun to drive. I love to go fast on road and off road, and I'm just really happy with the way this is running. Um, if you guys are interested in building 8100s or you have any questions on the build, um, go ahead and add them in the comments below uh, or give us a call at Shock Surplus. Message us. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Uh, we're out here testing these things, trying to get you some real world feedback, and uh, you know. Yeah, it's cold out here. It it's cold. Yeah. I got Thanks smoke for... in my eyes. I'm crying. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining our fireside chat, and uh, we look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Cheers.